Hey everybody, welcome today. You can't go 10 seconds going on the internet, researching your symptoms without coming upon something that references some sort of infection, some sort of gut infection, some sort of hidden secret infection. And today we're going to be looking at, are these infections the myths of urban legend or are they the secret sauce, the holy grail behind everything that's going wrong with your health? Well, we're going to be blowing the lid wide open today. It's Science Thursday, and we're going to be going in head, head to head with one of the lead researchers in digestive and infection health. And we're going to be breaking wide open the lid is what is the scientific evidence? What are the scientific mechanisms behind everything infection and digestion? And without further ado, here we go. Hey everybody, I'm Maggie UMD, founder of Transform. Welcome today to Science Thursday. We are today breaking the lid wide open on everything that's infection related. How many of you guys have heard about chronic gut infections? Uh, for some of you, this is a well-versed topic, something you've been struggling with for a long time, while for others, it's something they've just barely scratched the surface. And for most of you, most of your doctors don't even believe it's really real and it exists. We're talking about infections that like have names like candida, um, SIBO, uh, H. pylori, C. difficile, and even uh, non-gut infection related infections like even Lyme, long haul, believe it or not, those are all linked with gut infections as well. And these infections have been linked, yes, scientifically, to many other sorts of disease. And what are some of these diseases that can be linked with chronic infection? We're talking about things like autoimmune diseases, whether it's ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's. How many of you with any autoimmune disease know that infection is one of the culprits that's triggering it? And then how many of you guys are dealing with but, um, diagnosis like fibromyalgia, chronic pain, right? Yes, there's an infection component cancer even, right? And then there are mystery diagnoses like mass cell activation syndrome, histamine intolerance, POTS, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia, as well as dysautonomia, right? Believe it or not, more and more scientific evidence is pointing to the fact that there is underlying infections that are the cause of this. So today we're going to be Bringing on soon. Give me a call. Wait for it. Wait for it. I have a very special guest today. But in the meantime, all of you that are watching in chat, hello from Long Island. Darlene, thank you so much. What I would love for you guys to do is all of you guys that are watching, tell me where you're watching from in chat right now. And uh, if you, Australia, thank you. Dallas, Flora is watching from Dallas. Thank you. And if any of you guys have worked with me and in any of our programs, if you can type in chat, you're an alumni, tell us you're an alumni and what health struggles you've overcome in the chat. That'd be really awesome. So I know you're watching and you can tell everybody, shout from the rooftop, what you have overcome in your health. That'd be really awesome. Christy's watching from Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, hey from Virginia, um, Virginia Beach. Sheila is from Wisconsin. Thank you so much. Ontario, Canada. BK is watching from there. Uh, and we have YouTube watchers that are coming in right now. If you're on YouTube, don't be, don't be shy and, and not tell me where you're from in, on YouTube. I would love for you guys, everybody right now is we're going to provide a link also to the live that's happening right now on YouTube. I would love for you guys to click the link and watch it on YouTube. Why? I want you to subscribe to our channel right now. I want you to subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart. Give me a comment in our YouTube channel. Um, uh, to tell me that you're watching from YouTube. Hello. Someone's watching from Oregon, uh, from YouTube. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I am based out of Oregon and now Washington. Um, Awesome, everybody. Joshua is watching. A friend has cancer in the bone and in the lymph nodes. Yep. Cancer can be linked with infection as well. So what I'm going to do right now is without further ado, all right, our guests, we're inviting our guests, um, microbiome nerd himself, <laughs> Mr. Brian <laughs> Kaufman, who's the vice president of Prolean Health and Biologicals, is here today. Welcome, Brian, micro nerd, micro nerd number one that I know. Hey, thank you, Maggie, so much for coming on. Yep, I am the microbiome nerd, and uh, just it didn't start that way, right? So, two thousand years ago, Socrates said all disease begins in the gut, and you know maybe that's true. And maybe we haven't come that far since then, but I believe that life begins in the gut, and it started uh, a long time ago when I was in the army as a medic. And the underlying cause for every person I ever treated, right, there was some kind of digestive underlying cause. From there. 
I worked as a nurse and, you know, like most people that graduate college, I thought I was going to get drafted right into my favorite job in the world. I didn't. And you know what? It was the best thing that ever happened to me. I started off in med surge and it eventually found myself in GI where I found all these different disease states, all these problems that these people had. And they were sharing all this information with me. And there was one underlying thing. There was an underlying cause that was not being attacked right? I was just masking symptoms. I wasn't actually helping a lot of people until I came in contact with a company that had developed an antibody from a bovine source that had the acquired immunity, the ability to eradicate a lot of the underlying cause for many of my patients' problems like diarrhea, bloating, flatulence, abdominal pain, those things that make you never want to travel or go to your kids' baseball games and stuff. I saw people getting their life back and that's how it became the microbiome. Well, so here um, I have uh, already, BK is saying that I just found out today, three years cancer-free had colorectal cancer in 2020, right? Um, one, I want to bring it back, which is this, which is we have a mixture of different people in the audience. One of the things in common here is that they're all here watching and they, they know that infection is an underlying root cause of many of the things we're talking about, whether it's allergies, IBS, like you're talking about, cancer, autoimmune diseases, you name it, right? And um, one of the most common things that we hear that we have all experienced, and I am a doctor, I am an MD, is that doctors, medical doctors do not believe that these chronic infections in the gut are real. Number one, urgent myth, myth number one, these infections aren't real. They were conjured up somehow. And so I would love to have you and I talk about how, number one, are infections real? And number two, how do they contribute to disease? disease? Brian, take it away. Okay. First question is a softball. Yes, they're real. Okay. Second question, they contribute to every aspect in every body system, everything that's going on with us, right? Everything starts here in the gut. Now it may manifest as some type of skin problem, inflammation, or maybe achy bones or diarrhea or bloating, but it starts in the gut with an inflammatory reaction that's brought on by an endotoxin or specific fungal or bacteria that causes inflammation. It just happens to manifest itself in that skin problem or that diarrhea or bloating, but it all starts here. Oh, thank you so much for bringing up that slide. Okay, and it's a cycle of events. For many of you guys that are on right now, you probably think to yourself, I've tried everything and I feel like I'm just a hamster on a hamster wheel. I'm huffing and I'm puffing and you know what? I'm not going anywhere because the missing piece of the puzzle was removing that underlying cause. If you look up into middle top left of your screen right now, it says altered gut microbiota, right? All this is, is a top layer of your gut. You're coming in contact with the bad guys. The bad guys are then fed down into your immune system where that dendritic cell, that big octopus looking thing that's right there, binds it and feeds it to our immune system, those lymphocytes. Well, when we come overrun with endotoxins, right? That immune system is just uh, it's just firing and firing and firing, and it yep. just can't catch up. That well, immune activation causes a breakdown in the gut barrier. So that nice gut barrier that you have all of a sudden looks like this. Well, here's the cool thing, everybody. I want you guys to look at the very bottom of the screen where it says immune activation. Immune activation, a lot of people just think it has to do with like your immunity getting sick and a cold and a flu. But I want to see point you guys the arrow where it goes to the next immune activation, that arrow right there says increase in mast cells. Okay. Mast cells are cells in your immune system that actually make histamines. They create histamines. Um, so believe it or not, it's also about increasing the amount of allergic reactions in your gut. Those of you guys who think like, oh, uh, I didn't have this problem before, but now everything that I eat, I seem to feel like there's a reaction to, there's an allergy to. Well, there's actually a mechanism with which when the bacteria in your gut, which is the left upper corner here in the orange, when that bacterial mix between the good and bacteria, good and bad bacteria, when the ratios between them, when the balance between them changes, it immediately goes downstream into this bloodstream and it activates these cells like the mast cell. Um, many of these other cells, natural killer cells, there's a lot of cells, different cells in your immune system. It's like armies, different armies. Think about it as Air Force, think about it as the Navy, think about it as the Army, gets activated. And some of these will go and activate and make a ton more um, allergies, allergic reactions. Some of these will activate what we call inflammatory pathways causing pain, pain. How many of you have chronic pain? 
How many of your autoimmune diseases that are associated with pain? How many of you have neuropathy? Type in chat if you're dealing with chronic pain. Well, the gut bacteria immediately, scientifically, actually has mechanisms to activate these cells in your immune system, and they actually go and produce pro-inflammatory pain pathways. And finally, number three, some people are talking about cancer here. And I'm going to tell you right now, immediately with cancer, there are actually pathways where these immune cells, once activated, will trigger cells down a pro-cancer pathway. They even show now that a specific type of bacteria can actually infect, um, once the mucus lining layer is disrupted, that that one particular type of bacteria will trigger an immune activation. That's one of the underlying root causes of colon cancer. That's how specific the research is becoming and the science behind this. Infections, disruptions in the gut bacteria, the balance between the good and gut, bad bacteria in your gut will trigger all these pathways downstream and is in fact responsible for all these symptoms and that diagnosis that you're talking about. Is that ringing a bell? And if that's ringing a bell, type in chat that it's ringing a bell. And so Brian, you're talking about here that um, looking at this immune activation is not just about cold and flu and, and your immunity. I'm pointing out that immune activation actually triggers a whole lot of other pathways in the body. Absolutely. And yes, we want our immune system to work, right? Um, I like to work out, but I don't want to work out 24 hours a day. I would be pooped, right? No pun intended. Um, <laughs> and so when you just overwork that immune system, it gets so tired. And now you've got this broken down gut lining. You're allowing good bacteria, bad bacteria, and it just yeah. doesn't know what to do. The worst part about this, outside of everything else, impaired nutrient absorption. You're no longer absorbing the water, the nutrients, the ability to thrive that you're putting into your body and not equipping it with the food and the nutrients that it needs to fight. So this leads me down to with this. And some, one of the things you guys realize is, is that when this immune activation happens, and I'm going to just pop us back out of here, is this. When this immune activation happens, you have to understand what's happened in your gut is a war zone. But before you even get the disrupted bacteria in your gut, what are the, some of the underlying causes that causes the bacterial mix, the blend between the good and the bad to be out of whack, to be out of balance? Why are there sometimes so many bad characters and so few good uh, characters in the gut? For me, one of the, let's look at the causes of what causes. Why are we make, creating environments in our own bodies? Uh, what's happened that's caused our environments to be so vulnerable to infections like these? And one of the things I just alluded to is the increase in food allergies, okay? And I'm going to ask how many people this rings a bell with, is that um, what we're finding is that what's happening at an alarm rate, alarming rate is that people are reacting allergically to more and more and more foods. And there's a lot of reasons behind it. In our program, I really, in our programs, I really talk about how using just gluten as an example. And I'm going to ask you guys, how many of you guys know that you are sensitive or have a reaction to certain foods? Tell me what those are in chat right now, right? But using gluten as an example, we have selectively bred wheat and selected for specific varieties of wheat that contain more and more gluten. And why we've done that is for production, mass production of bread and stability of shelf life so that they are they have a higher and higher level of gluten content. The more gluten there is in bread, um, the more there's a shelf life uh, to bread. So interestingly, when um, you, let's say you go to Europe, if you go to Europe and you get a loaf of bread, um, they don't allow for these highly selected um, grains. Uh, they like to ancient grains of wheat selectively. They don't do cross feeding over and over again to get these breeds that have really high in gluten. So the content of gluten is lower in European wheat. But the bread lasts a lot less time because it is lower in gluten. But you will also find that people who are gluten sensitive when they eat bread out of Europe, they don't react like they normally do. So environmentally, Brian, we've selected for foods that will have higher and higher content of certain allergens that a lot of people are sensitive to, number one. Um, that's one problem, right? Number two, we're, we're coming to the point where we're using so much um, pesticides. Uh, we are feeding our animals a lot of antibiotics because we're mass growing animals. So we're get, we're eating and we're taking a bunch of antibiotics. We're taking a bunch of pesticides and the animals and the food that we eat have a very high antibiotic load. What happens when we eat and eat this much antibiotics and pesticides, Brian? Oh, it's a, a storm of effects, right? Not only are we consuming 
nutrient dense less food that ha- that triggers more allergies, but our acquired immune si- our innate and our acquired immune systems aren't what our parents and their grandparents were because we're not outside farming and things like that. Add on to that the overuse of antibiotics. Antibiotics, yeah. yes, they kill the bad bacteria, but guess what? They kill the good bacteria. I a know. lot of you on here right now may have like, oh, I had a bout of antibiotics, and then man, I had digestive problems for a year after that because you've just broken down. You too? C. diff, Brian. And oh my God. I feel like people don't talk about C. diff enough. Like C. diff is how I got here. C. diff is how I got here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it costs on average about twelve to $15,000 per day to manage a C. diff patient. Not to mention the mental anguish. They don't know what it is. Pain. Brian, they don't know what it is. Let's tell people what C. diff is, okay? Because okay. I, I, I'm actually, I want, I want to scream C. diff in the roof of my head because I feel like all the other infections gets all the attention. Um, C. diff is a product of taking an antibiotic. So certain antibiotics, um, many, uh, whenever you take an antibiotic, I mean, they are big guns, meaning that they don't just, like Brian just said, they don't kill just all the bad guys, they kill all the good guys as well. And what happens is when you kind of clear a zone, guess what? Some certain types of bacteria that are resistant to that will start to grow and they have all the space to do it. C. difficile, Clostridium difficile is one such bacterial strain that can be present in a very small amount in your gut. No big deal. But what happens is you put an antibiotic. In my case, Brian, I had, it was after the birth of my first child. I took one dose. My first, I had breast infection from breastfeeding. How many of you guys had that happen? And then I took one dose of doxycycline. And then immediately after that, it started me on a path of severe diarrhea, mucousy diarrhea, and that wouldn't go away. And this is, I mean, 20, oh boy, I'm aging myself. Uh, this was like 23 years ago. <laughs> And they didn't really even know. It took a while to even get a diagnosis. And I went through rounds and rounds of antibiotics after that to kill C. diff, which didn't work. I went through six rounds of antibiotics and it wouldn't kill the C. diff and it kept coming back over and over again. And that was the start of all my health problems. What about you? It's awful. It's absolutely awful. I can diagnose C. diff from three floors down. You can smell it. Absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> if you've been there, you know. Yeah. But it's so debilitating. It's so expensive to treat. And again, no one can come and see you. And when your practitioner or your nurse comes in there, they've got a gown, glove, mask. I mean, they look like a like a stormtrooper when they come into you. You can't have anyone come and see you. It's absolutely awful. It wasn't like that 20 years ago, Brian. Like C. diff has become like that. And now we have people because, I mean, I would say that people, do, it's it's one of those things that these kinds of infections are becoming more and more common and they're becoming more and more resistant to the point now where, you know, some of these infections people have to treat in spacesuits um, because we don't want to spread it all around the hospital at this point. Um, so it, it's interesting how I've seen the evolution of C. diff as a, res- it's an infection as a result of antibiotics. So if you think about it, by the way, everybody, Okay. This is a problem to me with a shotgun approach that we have in your conventional medical world, right? So your doctor don't believe that these infections in your gut are real, yet there's scientific proof beyond any doubt. Not only are they real, we can test for them and there are mechanisms underneath it, but there are also way, but there are you know, ways to deal with them. But the one shot shotgun way of dealing with them, I call it the AK-47 approach is throw an antibiotic at every infection. But the problem is having a C. diff infection shows you the folly of that approach is that you can then actually have a lot of resistant infections that come up. And whether that's because they're treating you, whether you're eating antibiotics in your environment from your food, right? Or you're taking an antibiotic because that's the only tool that your doctor has. We are actually selectively breeding for these resistant infections. Absolutely. And, and you know what, I hate to disagree with you so early, but it's not an AK-47. It's an atom bomb. It is literally yeah. blowing up everything in your entire yeah. gut. Good right. bacteria, bad bacteria, breaking down the gut lining, allowing all that stuff to flow through and keeping you in that hamster wheel of immune activation. Yeah, 100% agree. And I'm going to ask people in the audience right now is, is that, you know, then, you know, if you, if you, if, you know, if you have had one of these infections and you know for a fact that you do, type it in chat. I would love to hear from you about this. The problem is for me, like 
For me, Brian, you mentioned that um, when people have these infections, it's not just about, oh, let's just clear all the infection, in which case you go to your regular doctor, they don't believe it's real. And if they believe it's real, they're going to throw antibiotics with you. We already see the problems with that. But one of the other problems is you mentioned is that when digest, like it really, for me, these infections um, really cause a problem with malnutrition and digestion. So one of the problems is these infections will cause a problem because you have all these different steps in digestion and we have a lot of videos around digestion. And this is the other thing is nobody is talking about the impact um, of infection has had on people's underlying that every single step in digestion can be affected. So we're seeing a very malnourished population or poorly nourished population as a result of this infection. And even their digestion absorption with a medication or food uh, is really hampered. So it's almost like you can't reload. You can't reload your own immune system's ability to fight these infections. It, I tell when I when I counsel athletes and stuff like that, people that are trying to get that one, two yep. percent above to be the best Peak and form. they're ate up with infl inflammation and gut issues and things like that. I tell them it doesn't matter how much water and nutrients and protein you take in. It's about how much you can absorb. And if your gut lining is chewed up and the body's just throwing it out the other end, you're not absorbing all that, which leads to that malabsorption and the inability to live your best life. So I have a perfect example of this. Um, one of our clients um, is an athlete, um, is an athlete and she's 22 years old and in college, you know, trying to go to college and having severe IBS symptoms and trying to perform um, with uh, high performance. And it, the incoming diagnosis was chronic fatigue and irritable bowel syndrome and POTS like symptoms, postural orthostatic. So a lot of dizziness, fainting type of symptoms. And the very, within the second or third week of working with us and edu getting educated on digestion, her IBS was gone. Her irritable bowel syndrome was gone. And yet nobody had ever spoken to her about digestion and not even thinking about infection. It's like, I'm, I to me, infection happens sometimes as a result of poor digestion. I want people to think about digestion as every single step that you do to digest the food is an opportunity with which your gut is already protecting you from infection. It's almost like there's layers and armies ahead uh, at every step, right? And that's why for me, one of the one of the best selling products, the Sock Science, okay, would be a multiphasic digestive enzyme product that has every step of digestion covered because those many steps are actually broken. So I would say the first stage of preventing infection, number one is proper digestion. And which is why with digested, my recommendation for people is first of all, um, I have an upcoming book coming out, boy, uh, we'll talk more about that later, but there is a book coming out in a couple of weeks, everybody, uh, in which, uh, I go into big, big part of the book about all the different steps in digestion and why we're not paying attention. It's like, nobody's guarding your palace. There should be layers of palace guards and nobody is there. And so a really simple way is take a digestive enzyme with a, has a product that is multiphasic covering every step, stomach acid, pancreatic enzymes, um, ox bile to cover fat digestion. Um, I think that to me is step one. What can we do to fight and prevent infection? Proper digestion, step number one. And then we talked about allergies, which is really important is identifying the foods that you are allergic to or having a reaction to is step number two, which is why food mapping is really critical. It's a system that we use in our program to actually use accurate, accurately, scientifically to, to figure out what foods are triggering gut allergies in you. When you have a lot of allergies to foods in your gut, it's like a swollen mess and it's porous as heck and all these bacteria and antigens are going to go in, which I'm going to start talking about. Brian, what's the scientific basis behind LPS, endotoxins? What are these terms that people are talking about that, you know, gets what are LPS? What are endotoxins? Would love your insight on that and, and teaching on that. Great question. It is a blanket statement that covers different inflammatory bacteria, fungi, parasites, and some viruses. Essentially, any gram-positive, gram gram-negative bacteria, but anything that causes an immune response that then leads to degradation of the microbiome epithelial layer in the gut, that top layer in the gut that absorbs yeah. everything, right? And various, you, you're going to hear uh, lipopolysaccharide, LPS, a byproduct of too much bad bacteria in your gut, along with things like H. pylori. We already talked a little bit about C. diff. That's a nasty one. Right. But also fungal components, specifically 
candida. Yeah. That one is just now gaining popularity. We used to call it digestive plaque, right? Think of cholesterol in your arteries. No different than candida buildup in your gut, your, your intestine. This is this wide. Now it's this wide. That leads to constipation. That leads to stool and everything being in the digestive tract too long. A breeding ground for more problems that usually manifest as bloating, constipation, skin issues, and achy bones and joints. Yeah. I always tell people when um, that when people have skin issues on the outside, your outside skin is a mirror of what's happening on your inside skin. So it's really interesting. You know, we have our teenagers with acne and I tell people that if I, I see a, a teenager or an adult with the acne on the outside, you know, that's happening on the inside. That's infection on the inside skin, just FYI. So our body's actually talking to us and showing us um, all over the place what's going on underneath. But are we willing to listen to it? Do we understand what it's trying to say to us? So I'm giving you some of the language, the body talk that your body's talking to you. You see acne on the outside. That's happening with infection on the inside. You see eczema on the outside. Side, like allergic eczema on the outside, there's tons of allergies that are going on on the inside and the surface of your gut is raw and itchy just like that on the inside. And yet we call it IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And we don't know what the cause is, but there are clues hidden all over some of the symptoms from your body, other systems that are telling you what the answer really is. Absolutely. And, you know, people think, they think of body systems and organs and things like that. They don't realize that the largest organ that you have is your integument. And so if you're ate up with intestinal inflammation, the first place you're going to see it is your skin. It's, it's really interesting. And then we, we deal in the programs, like not only with eczema, with people with allergies, but there's a lot of people with autoimmune related disorders with the skin. And you're talking about lichen sclerosis, uh, and you're talking, um, about psoriasis. Psori I was going to say plaque psoriasis. It, there is a link of those conditions to what's happening in your gut with food allergies and gut infection. And I hope you guys are starting to see the link there. I 100% I live by this healthy gut, healthy life. If you got problems in your life from a medical standpoint, fix the gut first. Remember, 2000 years ago, Socrates said all disease begins in the gut, but so does life. Well, so here, first thing first, as I tell people, is really think about the environmental and food allergens that are coming in and why food mapping is so critical. Uh, and if you guys want to learn more about what food mapping is, the system that we use to, your own, to use your own personalized data to accurately pinpoint which foods are triggering your allergic and gut reactions, uh, type that in chat, more information about food mapping. Our team will get food mapping information to you. And it is our unique system of using science to identify it. No guessing, no elimination diets. The second thing that we talked about was using a di multiphasic digestive support supplement like Digestit. Now, one of the things that I want to bring up, number three now, is we talk about these LPS and endotoxins. And Maggie, Dr. Maggie speak, I'm going to tell you guys, is that when you have more bacteria, more fungus, more viruses that are infecting your gut, you're going to have more of these toxins, more of the insides of these organisms when they split. They grow, they die. They grow, they die. They split open. But every time they spill open, they release a lot of these insides and they're very allergenic. When you're looking at candida, the molecule, just candida, let's speak candida, which is a fungal infection, in overgrowth or infection in your gut. Um, the antigens that are on candida are some of the most irritating things to your body. And as a response, if somebody has a high amount of fungus in them, your allergy systems are going to fire like crazy. It just says allergen, 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 allergen. I would love, I mean, we're going to talk more about like what things bind to, but I know there's a slide around some of the allergens on different, um, on, on different organisms. I would love, Brian, if you could talk about the parts of the organisms that are allergenic, right? Gotcha. And also so, that some of these products can bind to. So the kind of, so what we're talking about is binding and removing, going to the underlying cause of that inflammatory response that leads to bloating and diarrhea and skin manifestations. It's an actual endotoxin. So specifically serum bovine immunoglobulin is an amazing antibody concentrate. It's like the bouncer for your personal club, right? You want to get the bad actors out. And so what you're looking at here is that another, this is a cross-sectional layer of your gut line. And on the top left corner, you see that the antibody concentrate binds up that bad bacteria before it can set off that inflammatory response. When it binds onto it, hangs on tight, and, and increases and changes its size so that it can't go through that damaged gut lining. Once you've mobilized 
all that all that inflammatory bacteria and start to move it through the GI tract, the immune system goes, sweet, we don't have all these bad guys on anymore. We can actually set off anti-inflammatory cytokines and allow the gut lining to go from this just Swiss cheese looking barrier and slowly contract and get those tight junction proteins and bring it all nice and flush so that you can live a healthier, happier life and start absorbing that water and nutrients and get rid of all that diarrhea and bloating. Uh-oh. I lost sound. Uh oh. Sorry about that. I had a dog dog barking. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I want everybody to pause for a second here because what he said has a mind blow section here, and I I I, I really want you guys to pay attention and take notes right here. So remember what we just said is that all these organisms, when there is an increase in amount of these bad characters, they, there's an increased amount of parts um, that are allergenic or parts that triggered a lot of these downstream effects and disease. So um, looking at the LPS, looking at the endotoxin, looking at the parts of these bacteria and fungus, there is something that he has researched and developed that can bind to these things. So can we talk about we can actually get something to, uh, there is a protein that uh, something that can bind to these top triggering parts of these organisms. Can you explain what SBI is? So serum bovine immunoglobulin is nothing more than an antibody. It's a protein with a high antibody concentrate and antibodies do one thing. They are coded to specifically find those bad guys, latch onto them, increase their size, and not allow them to set off that inflammatory response. It gets mobilized. It goes right out the other end with your poop, right? Best case scenario, get the bad guys out. And that's how I got here. For years, I was just giving Percocet, hoping patients would do better, looking at my sheet today going, all right, we'll see what we can do, right? I finally had a tool in my gut health toolbox to go in and remove the underlying cause and allow these people to heal. So I have a question for you. Um, when you we've talked about the research and development, you're in R and D research and development around this, and the team that um, developed these immunoglobulins. And my question is, why are why wasn't a product like this to bind some of these endotoxins and LPS and parts of these organisms? Why wasn't a product like this turned into a pharmaceutical blockbuster drug? Uh, a couple of reasons. The first one, it's a protein. It's a protein with a high IgG uh, concentrate. And we're a third generation family owned company here in Iowa. We're not Merck. We're not Pfizer. All we want to do is help people. And we knew if we could just get it to the public that people would latch on and they would get better. So we actually launched a prescription medical food product called Interrogan. Now, unfortunately, medical foods are not very well covered by uh, commercial insurance. So it kind of got lost in the shuffle. But it, in the AGA survey, which is the largest comprehensive survey of gastroenterologists and IBS patients in the world, and it was funded by Allergan and Ironwood Pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical Companies, we were actually, Interrogan was rated highest in patient satisfaction of, above biologic drugs, antidiarrheals, and other prescription products. When commercial coverage tanked, I went to the FDA and I said, it's just a protein. Can I reduce the dosage to a supplemental form and launch it into nutraceuticals so that everyone can get their hands on it? Because everyone needs to be on this product. So here's the thing. I think people have to realize you got to follow the money of what's available and what's not available as a prescription. Okay. And there is so much science behind uh, SBIs that are in die off buster. And yet because insurance doesn't cover it, it is not mass marketed as a, you know, drug that you can just buy or pres get prescribed. So a lot of people don't realize that there's so much science behind a protein like an SBI and there's so many advantages of it, but yet because of following the money and insurance, co lack of insurance coverage of it, it is not a prescription drug. And we're an R&D company. We're an R&D company. It's our job to make great things and put them in, 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 into, into the, the consumer's hands. Um, it's got 45 human clinical trials, all microbiome focused. Yep. I have two sales reps that talk to great, to great companies, help them launch products. I have 21 PhDs.
We're a microbiome focused company and this product has great science behind it. It's efficacious and it's safe. It's crazy, right? Look at, I mean, look at these results. This was a great study that we did. Uh, so this was our kind of flagship, most comprehensive IBSD trial. And when we started, we said, well, IBSD is a blanket diagnosis for a lot of things, right? And we don't want to show endpoints that just reduces diarrhea for a small period of time. And then we never see the people again, right? We wanted to decrease the total number of days that people have IBSD symptoms like loose stools, abdominal discomfort, urgency, flashlights, bloating, right? And mm -hmm. we were able to reduce the number of days by 30 to 40%. That's like getting four months of your life back. <laughs> Everyone that's on here right now, that's probably been dealing with stuff for probably years. If you could get the next four, if you could get the last four months of your life back, would you do it? I bet you would. But Brian, there are drugs on the market with less results than this. I mean, was, I'm serious. Oh, I know. I mean, when you <laughs> that's why we lost commercial coverage. <laughs> there are drugs on the market that have been approved that have more side effects. I mean, this product has no side effects. You have like 39%. There are drugs on the market that, I mean, that's considered a huge response. IBS, odds ratio, refractory IBS. So this was a great study, actually. There's probably people that are on here right now that got put on rifaximin, right? Zyfaxin. Yeah. Yep, for SIBO, standard of care, rifaximin, 550 TID. Uh, this was this study was done with a great um, a gastroenterologist named Dr. Leonard Weinstock out of St. Louis University, and he was a naysayer. He was like, no, this is pseudoscience. There's no way that this worked. And I made him a deal. I said, if you try this, on your 10 patients and nothing happens, I will never walk into your office again. You'll never have to hear me again. You can kick me to the curb. And he was like, Pepsi challenge accepted. So we we took the patients and we gave them lactulose breath tests. If they were positive, they got standard of care, that uh, rifaximin, that antibiotic. When they failed, which over 50% do, all we did was we gave them four weeks of SBI. For those that were negative, traditional therapies, unresponsive, four weeks of SBI. Go to the next slide. Here's the results, 88% satisfaction. These were people that were literally running from events in their own home. I can't go to honors day. I can't go to softball practice. I don't go to things because I'm too worried about where a bathroom is. We gave them their life back. Have you ever seen anything with 88% response? The answer is no. And that's the thing, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the answer is no. And that's the thing is, I mean, I think that's why I'm calling this Science Friday, uh, Science uh, Thursday, um, because I don't think um, our audience and so many times, and, and trust me, my biggest shame as a doctor was actually having no training in nutrition, supplements, nothing or alternative medicine, right? And I would have somebody that would probably come to my clinic and say, hey, Dr. Yu, like I was, I learned that about this die off buster. It has this SBI protein and it, it's going to help my IBS symptoms or my infection. I'd be like, there's no data on it. But, you know, that's, you know, how many times I'm going to ask how many times people have actually walked into their doctor's clinic, have asked questions about supplements and are told that there is no science behind it or, or that there's no data behind it. I would love if you could type in chat uh, what that is. Right. And so for me, that is my biggest shame as a doctor. And which is why for me, I, I love having a science Thursday like this, where we're educating the public about treatment therapies, preventative therapies and treatment therapies are even more effective than most of the drugs that are being prescribed. How well, like you think? said, you didn't yeah. get the training, right? And I, I took a guess on this. So my background, I've got a degree in nursing and then I've got a, uh, I've got a degree from Purdue in nutrition. And as I was going through this process, I realized that many of my doctors who I trust and love, right? Mm -hmm. They got four hours, maybe even eight hours of nutrition training. How much did you get? Wait a minute. I'm going to interrupt you right there. I'm going to beat your record. Okay. <laughs> I went to UCLA and- all by all measures, one of the top medical schools in the country. Um, 30 minutes, 30 minutes in my no way. No, really 30 minutes. Dude. Maggie, my whole four years of medical school, I had 30 years of uh, 30 minutes of nutrition. Um, and I, uh, up until I got diagnosed with diabetes during my first pregnancy, which when I did, um, have, um, diabetes diagnosed, I got another additional 30 minutes of nutritional training. So overall, my first like four, 
eight years of practice, a total of one hour of nutritional training. Wow. This is the standard. That's unfortunate. And you know what? And that's why the standard for the American population is bloating and diarrhea. Painful limbs, skin problems. That's that's the new norm. In, in the future, we need let food be thy medicine. Choosing nutrient-dense rich foods, products that can help break down foods yeah. and using enzymes and nourish yeah. the microbiome and remove that underlying cause, that bad bacteria. So I'm going to talk to people about how I recommend people use die off busters. So I think of diet bus, <laughs> I think of die off buster as a protein that's going to surround some of these allergenic particles and irritating particles in the bacteria and the fungi as they grow and die, as they grow and die in your gut. So literally envelopes them goes out of your body. Okay. And you've seen the data on it. So I recommend that for anybody that has IBS, take one scoop. Um, uh, I'm going to have, have you, Brian, how would you recommend this the best use of this product? So when you start off, you want to completely mobilize those bacteria, bacteria right? I say start off with a scoop in the morning with, with breakfast, scoop in the, with dinner with, uh, with dinner. Doesn't have to be that way, but you know, you'll be more compliant and be more consistent with it. If you know, Hey, I take my die off buster with breakfast and I take my die off buster with dinner. Start that way. Then after 14 days, yeah. when we've mobilized all that bad bacteria, you can lower the dose, yeah. at which point gut barrier function and new healthy tissue turns over in the GI tract. Yeah. Get the bad guys out, let the gut heal and live your best life. I love that. And that's a really simple, uh, simple strategy. And it's science. there's science behind it, uh, exactly how to use that. So I love that. And then finally, like I want to talk about, we're talking about also there is bad bacteria, but there's also good bacteria in your gut. So, you know, we've already mentioned that when you take an antibiotic, um, it's going to kill off the good guys as well as the bad guys. Um, I know when I went through C. diff, I went through six rounds of antibiotics and you name it, I went through it and it still wouldn't go away. What finally got rid of it? Do you guys want to know? Do you want to guess? What do you think finally got rid of it? 18 months of this hell. Um, Brian, what do you think finally got rid of it? Not these six rounds of antibiotics. I'm hoping you're going to say SBI. It didn't exist 20 <laughs> years ago. I wish there was SBI then, right? I do too. I do too. Um, uh, I don't know. Elimination diets, uh, oh, prebiotics. Oh, I tried that. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. Um, it was finally um, eating. Um, it was uh, eating a ton. At that time, we didn't have all these strains of probiotics, right? So it was taking um, eat, eating a ton of yogurt and a ton of unpeeled fruit and vegetables. That's what did it. And unpeeled fruit and vegetables, a lot of probiotics and even spore-based probiotics that are in there. Um, and that's yogurt fine. has some. But the thing is for me is that still took a long time. And But that's what finally did it is that there's such a huge role in increasing the population of good bacteria in your gut. So if you even think about just population wise, what I've seen, I mean, and we've done a lot of testing. I mean, I've seen thousands of microbiome um, studies of the ratios between the good and bad bacteria, the different strains that are in people's gut. And what we're seeing here is an epidemic with the good strains. I call them utility workers in your gut. Um, they're present in lower and lower numbers. And the number of different species of them, which we call gut micro uh, diversity, the numbers are getting lower and lower. So what is there to do? And I think there's a huge role in taking of besides the, you know, unpeeled fruit and vegetables and yogurt. There's now even like, what is a targeted approach? Why do probiotics make such a big difference? And uh, by the way, I've done a training uh, with another microbiome nerd all about probiotics. And I, I think we're in the R and D development, research and development around this, Brian, I mean, what's your insight on how important a role probiotics and specific strains for specific uses have become? It's so important, but you know, what's more important than the probiotic mm -hmm. timing. There's probably people that are on right now that say, Oh, I tried a probiotic. It actually made me feel worse. It caused die off effects. Well, that's because the diversity was all over the place. Yeah. First, we have to reduce the endotoxin load use something like SBI to remove some bacteria. Once you start SBI, wait two weeks. Then we start throwing in mm -hmm. the spore-based probiotics and the Saccharomyces and things like that. In my opinion, in my experience, there's three ways, and I like to keep things simple, right? Yeah. There's three ways to fix the gut. The first one is to remove bad bacteria. Go to that underlying cause. The second one is to feed good bacteria. Like you had to do it 18 months. You had to nurse those little guys back to health, yeah. right? It took a long time. A lot of fiber. <laughs> A lot of fiber, right? So remove bad bacteria, feed good bacteria, and then 
nourish the gut microbiome. Great things like N-acetylglucosamine, mm -hmm. glutamine, slippery elm, things like that. And then there is a fourth one, and that's digestive enzymes and chew your food. Mm -hmm. Break that food down. Yeah. For me, I'm looking at pro... Where I. From the product side, people are like, just what what are the products? So Pro Profilor AI is one of, we have actually a whole line of probiotics and I, we're moving into the era where there are specific probiotics for specific use. I look at Profilor AI Plus as a flagship product. And the reason is because there are actually specific strains in there that help for people who are dealing with IBS, known and studied species for that. Number two, there are species that help with hormone and blood sugar balancing. And number three, specific strains of antibiotics that helps deal with food allergies and histamine issues. So that covers most of you, right? That's why it's that's why I'm looking at these strains and it, they are all the strains that are in Profilor AI. There's also S. Bayardi in there. That's also anti-infection as as well. So one of these a day, that's one way um, that would be one of the ways to populate with really high concentrations of specific strains for a specific purpose, uh, dealing with some of these top major symptoms. So that would be pro for AI plus. Um, the other thing that you had mentioned, and, and it's another product is our gut soothe product. You had mentioned some of the things that actually feed and nurse um, the um, lining of the gut and that helps the, can you go over that more? You, you talked about slippery M, aloe. I would love for you to break more into how, what's the science behind some of those ingredients um, that's in Gut Soothe and why it helps your gut actually heal. So those products work great because they work with goblet cells and things like that to help produce a protective barrier. So it's not enough just to remove the bad bacteria and start to feed the good bacteria. You've got that inflammation Think of it as like a cut on your on the top of your arm, right? right. You you can put a little bit of neosporin or something I like that. I call it like a there. raw wound. Think about it as a raw wound. Yeah, it is. It's a raw wound, and you need to protect it. So once we remove the bad guys, we're feeding the good guys. We're then going to use things like N-acetylglucosamine, glutamine, slippery elm, you know, stuff like that that will then interact with goblet cells to produce a mucosal layer and give you that extra little layer of protection so that gut layer can heal. Yeah, that's the thing is there are different like and Brian, go over your three steps. You said you wanted to make it easy into three steps. So I can repeat those three steps. I could even name uh, the specific product. I'll name the products associated with it. So it's clear to people. What is each step? What does it do? And then I'll name boom the product. Step one. Get rid of the bad guys. Get rid that's, of the bad guys. So that get would rid of the bad guys. That's the the inflammatory uh, the inflammatory uh, endotoxins. That's where you're using the SBI to bind yep. and remove them. That would be dioplast. Get rid of the bad guys. Bind the bad guys. Bind their toxins. Bind the irritating stuff. Bind the bad guys. Get rid of the bad guys. Get it out using an SBI product, which is Dioff Buster. Number one. Number two. Feed the good guys. Mm, feed the good guys. And what feeds the good guys? What are the ingredients? Probiotics, prebiotics, things like that. The AI oh. product that you were just mentioning. Yeah, that's Profloor AI Plus. So you want to get a lot of the good bacteria in there. Uh, and then number three, I think has a lot to do with how do we speed the healing in the gut, like the mucosal layers, feed the gut cells to heal would be? Nourishing the microbiome. And that's where your tummy smooth product is going to come into uh, in, into play. Get you into gut barrier function a lot faster, allow it to heal, and also prime that gut lining to start absorbing nutrients and water and protein so you can thrive. I love that. Um, if anybody's interested, uh, we'll put a link for the entire GI collection. We also have a leaky gut protocol. If any of you guys are interested in downloading a leaky gut protocol that explains all of these products and how to use them, um, we will have type leaky gut protocol into the chat. Um, we'll share some links with that. You can actually download my protocol that actually explains and educates you on what are some of the supplements we're talking about and how to utilize them. Uh, Lisa was like, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brian. Um, I would love. Um, are there any? If there was a, a you know, we're 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 really science geeking out here. Um, and I would love. Um, if is there any parting thought that you have around talking to somebody out there right now who is dealing with chronic pain, autoimmune disease, mast cell, POTS, or dysautonomia, and they keep hearing that infection has something to do with it. 
Um, and they're now getting educated. There's even science behind it. If there's like a first step, if you think about it, what is, if there was like a Dr. Brian, like, you know, if there's a Brian first step of what would be the most impact, impactful first domino that they could do to approach, um, chronic infection in their health. What, what do you think it would be? The first one is to look yourself in the mirror and go help is out there. There are lots of people around you right now that are dealing with the same things and sitting in silence and out of sight, out of mind, just deal with it, dealing with it. That's not good enough. Take a stance. You're going to do something about it, right? That's number one. Number two, eradicate and remove the bad guys, feed the good guys, nourish the gut microbiome. And lastly, chew your food and get a water filter. Right. If you don't have you don't have to have some big tankless water filter, get a little Brita pitcher. All right. We and increase your water intake. You want to make sure that you're drinking clean, good, filtered water. Yeah. For me, I would like to give some steps as well. Uh, when I think about it, I like to think about it is that the we got to focus on the environment. What is it about the environment in your gut that's inviting all these infections over and over again? They're real. They're mm. there. They've caused all these downstream effects. I feel like I'm in the area of education. Uh, I am educating you on what has caused this environment in the first place, what's created this environment that keeps inviting these infections. I would say that number one is get educated about what's caused underlying root causes of this environmental change that's happened in your gut. I'm even going to list what's caused this environmental change. And if you want to write it down, write it down. Okay. Um, number one, it's going to be poor digestion poor digestion. So the most important thing you can do to, to prevent infection is taking digested, like one with a small meal, two with big meals to cover those steps in digestion that are broken. These are the palace guards and layers of defense. Number two, number one is digestion. Number two is going to be food allergens and increased exposures and more sensitivity to food allergens. So how do we decrease the allergen load that's coming into our gut that's causing all the swelling and inflammation in the gut? Well, um, pretty straightforward. Don't go on an, an another elimination diet. If you're going to ask me why, we actually have a lot of trainings around why not to go on an elimination diet. What I advocate for is a data-driven approach using food mapping, the food mapping system, to identify specifically in your body which foods are actually triggering uh, the increased histamine response and allergy response and IBS, and what's not, because I think that people are too nutrient depleted. Um, and so why not use data-driven approach so you know what foods to also add back in without fear? Right. So the second thing is going to be the allergen load in your gut. And then the third thing that I'm going to say is going to be boom. Uh, I'm going to bring it up right now. It's going to be really look at the nutrient density. Like Brian said, chew your food. Chewing your food is great, which is, um, you know, helping the digestion part of it. But the very food that we put in in the first place um, is could be problematic if we are eating, um, for example, a, a lot of meat that's, um, let's say, has a lot of antibiotics that's been fed to it. Um, look for grass fed beef. Uh, look for organic meats, uh, look for organic fruits and vegetables that don't have all these pesticides and chemicals that are sprayed on them. Right. Um, and then, um, so I think our diet has a lot to, uh, to do with it. And number four, try to avoid getting treated with antibiotics. I think that's really important. Antibiotics have their place, but we have just so overused antibiotics. Yeah. We've developed all these super bugs and all these resistant things that now we have to use different and new types of antibiotics and completely deplete the gut barrier. All right, everybody. That is going to be a wrap. And here's some resources, just as a reminder. If you want to learn more, uh, if you want to learn more about any of these supplements that we've talked about, um, there's a link to go to our GI Essentials collection where every product we talked about is there. Uh, if you're interested in getting my leaky gut protocol, where I go and review all the different ways with which you can use these products to help heal a leaky gut and change the environment in your gut, um, put leaky gut protocol in chat. And lastly, if you're interested in working with me and my team and in our, any of our programs, we're going to put a link below for you to book a chat with our team. We would love to talk to you and learn more what's going on with you to see if it's a good fit and which program or programs you might be a good fit for. So that is a wrap. Thank you so much, Brian, for um, joining joining me today, my microbiome nerd. I love nerding out with you. I had a great time. Thanks, everybody.